to to discuss the the program. So without further ado, um, Rasi, the floor is yours. Uh, thanks, JJ. Good morning, uh, everybody on that side, the ladies and, and gentlemen on the call. On the, on the call. Um, I'm just going to talk. I, I don't, I'm not sure. It might take 10 minutes, might take seven minutes. Uh, um, obviously, I've got Lynn, Lynn in, next to me. Uh, I think most of you must have somewhere uh, encountered, uh, because she's been with us now since last year, I think uh, February, January. So, you know, with, with COVID and all the regulations and work permits and stuff, um, you know, she's, yeah, it was, was a tough time to get across to South Africa, but she and her family is here. Uh, Lynn took over from Maslubi Puzi, who was the, he was the senior manager of the, of the women's department. Um, we, when we decided um, a couple of years ago, you know, we want to put the women's game where it's supposed to be. Uh, and to be honest, I've been with SA Rugby since 2011. Uh, I think mm -hmm. only the last two years we really made the mind shift that, or the mind, not the mind shift, everybody you know, agreed and, and, and really bought into the fact that that the women's game you know, should be up there. Well, if it isn't on level par of Springbok 15, uh, it should be really close. And, and we all decided after you know, uh, understand that I think when Lynn gets her chance, she'll maybe explain to you where the women's game, the whole, the whole women's game in total, and specifically the South African women's game, is placed in the world. So, um, yes, we, we made that mind shift and uh, must still be I first want to say thank you to him. Uh, I know he's not on the call, but I'm sure it will get to him. And 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 he's still in close contact with one another. He was one of the guys that fought for women's rugby. You know, when the the mindset haven't changed. You know, he had to go through those tough times there. And and uh, he phoned me the other day when some of the games were were streamed and some of the games were televised. And and he saw the girls playing. In, uh, you know, in England and so on, he phoned me and he said he's just so proud that things actually worked out that way. And and obviously, then we appointed Lynn after. Um, you know, the first thing we had to do is to to make sure that we not we don't run a men's program uh, because we are fairly successful with men's sevens and men's fifteens. Uh, you know, my opinion was that I think one of the things that we are doing wrong is we are running a women's game on a men's program. Uh, what do I mean by saying that is that, you know, I think we do have the expertise and the knowledge and not that I'm saying we're the best, but we we just copied that with the women's game uh, and, and we didn't get the results at the sevens uh, and we didn't get the results at the 15. Uh, so far that we actually at one stage stopped the 15, uh, you know, the Springbok women from competing for a year or two just to try and, and, and build the base. So we wanted to make sure that we get the right person into to you know, to manage this whole process, and we decided to get a high performance manager in, and you know, after really doing some head hunting and and searching, and you know, we were lucky enough to to get Lynn on board. Uh, and Lynn, I mean, you ask him if you want to go and Google his CV, you'll see it's, it's really impressive, and I appreciate it when we talk about that. But Lynn is, I mean, she's played close to 80 games, just less than 80 games for for Ireland. She's you know, was captain for the for Ireland sevens and for the fifteens. She was part of Grand Slam teams. You know, she's a qualified physio. Uh, Lynn, uh, yeah, she she serves on a lot of committees. She's a she was a commentator. She at one stage, I think, she was involved in picking the player of the year, women's player of the year. There's so many different things that that I can say positive about her. And then obviously now working with her the last year uh, and. The energy and the understanding what she gets from the women's game or what she puts into the women's game. I'm actually a bit embarrassed about some of the things that we've tried in the past because we just tried to replicate a men's game, which is uh, totally different. Uh, not just because women are women, but uh, the way, you know, we almost uh, just wanted the woman to start performing at the same level. And I think um, I'm going to hand over to Lynn now. Uh, but I think that is one of the big things. If I can, the last two points, maybe if I can, you know, finish up uh, off with this. The the, the first one is, um, I think, 
you know, it's one of the hardest properties, women's, women's rugby in, in SA rugby currently. Uh, as I said to you clearly, and it, it's out there, it, it's, it's higher ranked in our organization currently than the Blitz Poker, than the Junior Springboks. And, and it's a matter of time, of course, we, we can't ignore it, we won't ignore it, we don't want to ignore it. And, you know, I think it will obviously, uh, the transition with, with the, you know, the budgets and, and the money and the resources and those kind of things uh, will, won't happen like that. We all understand that, but the mind shift has changes. And, yeah, the things that has been done with competitions, uh, just a simple example, I've never had so many meetings with uh, CEOs with Lynn, where we talk about the standard of competition, the standard of, of the coaches in the Premiership competition or, you know, the First Division competition, uh, also the Men's Curry Cup um, equivalent on the other side. So the small little things, the programs that she's bringing in and the way she's doing it is definitely beneficial. And then maybe um, saying in the same breath, uh, you know, we want to not by managing expectations uh, um, let it sound like like excuses. You know, it is a big year. We're playing in the World Cup, and there's some other tournaments which Lynn might mention. Uh, we have to realize we are women are, and we you know we currently in talks with, with, with some sponsors who's really awesome, solid, solid uh, sponsors, and I, I really hope we get them on board because they, you know, they they will help us build this foundation. I think we've built the foundation already. Actually, take the take us to the. <laughs> what is the first, the, you know, the first step to to becoming great? So I think we have to be realistic about that. And then obviously, uh, yeah, this is almost a plea for for people to to really take this to heart and understand that this won't go away. You know, I think if somebody wants to be part of something great, any sponsor uh, uh, on any level, I think this is one one of the things that we will we go full out for the next couple of years. So yeah, obviously at the end of the Lynn, um, I think. Uh, JJ will uh, help us to uh, answer some questions from you guys. And if we can keep it only to women's rugby, that would be great. Yeah, over to you, Lynn. Lovely, thank you. Look, thanks everybody for joining and um, thanks Rassi and, and everybody at Saru for their support since, since I've been here. Look, it's a really exciting era, I think in general for women's sport and definitely for, for women's rugby. And I think hopefully, I wanna just tell you a little bit of, st of a story about the women's game to kind of frame where we're at. But it, just to give you a sense of, of the kind of growth potential in, in women's sport and women's rugby, I think in in twenty between 2012 and, and 2016, 20, uh, it was actually 2014 to 2018, I think the men's game grew by 6% and, and the women's game grew by 25%. And obviously we don't know what the latest figures are, kind of more K-COVID based. And we know the women's game is coming from a lower base, but the game is already growing, women's sport is already growing, and, and I think the potential is massive. And naturally, when we zoom into the potential within South Africa, that's probably what we're trying to capture in all of the conversations that we're having. Um, and what I've noticed since I've come here, and although I've got lots of kind of global information and global experience in women's sport and women's rugby, I think what I've been really blown away by is, is the interest and the appetite for, for growth within the women's game. Well, I'm definitely seeing that within Saru at a leadership level, and I'm definitely seeing that within the provincial unions and all of the conversations that I'm having. So hopefully that community, we can build that community and, and turn it into something special and build on the great work that was done before um, with Mr. Puzzi and, and the work that they all did. And we all know there has to be soldiers that start something and hopefully we can take it on to the next step. And um, so to do that, I just want to tell you a little story about the, the, the global game <clears throat> to give you some context. Here we go. That's the first one, isn't it? Yeah. OK, so if you're all rugby um, nuts, then you'll know that I think that the first men's rugby that was played in, in the world was in the, the late stage of the 1800s. And there was actually women's game was spotted in the late 1800s, but it generally kind of vanished for about 90 years. <clears throat> and the reason behind that was probably societal reasons is that um, there was more opportunity for guys to play sport, for example. But in 1982, the first women's test between Netherlands and, and France happened. That was 40 years ago. And ever since that, that's all, ever since that, there's been kind of World Cups that have marked the activity within the game. And the first World Cup was in 1991. And um, in 2000, the first Women's Six Nations was played. And in 2001 was the first Springbok 
back actual game and but the first test was in 2004. We all know that the attendances has, have over the years have started to increase in the women's game in, in particular over the last 10 years and obviously the sevens game came into the Olympics in 2016 and obviously now we're at 2021 and we're facing into a rugby world cup in New Zealand. <clears throat> so if you zoom into what that looks like from a South African context, as I mentioned in 2001, there was the first women's rugby played in South Africa at a representative level, but at a test level, it wasn't until two, 2004. So that's what 18 years ago, 18, 19 years ago. And most of the activity, as I said, has been tracked at World Cup cycles after that um, in 2006 and South Africa played in 2006. They were they finished 12th. They played 2010. They were finished 10th. They played in um, 2014 and they were they were finished 10th. And in 2014, there was a there was a, a kind of a hiatus, a break away from the representative game. In 2014, the women's Springbok didn't play international 15s. They they focused on a, the sevens code um, and the World Series and trying to get on the World Series and so on. And at the 15s game focused developmentally what was going on on the ground. And then in 20, the, the, the 2018, the, the programme restarted again. And obviously COVID hit us and, and it brings us to this point. Yes, hold on. And look, this context I think is important when we kind of frame what we're trying to do over the next five, 10 years, but also what we're going to, what we're hoping to achieve this year and, and next. So presently the, the Springbok women are, are ranked 13th in the world. And to give you a sense of experience, since they started in 2001, 2004, they played 38 games. So I know you'll all hopefully be able to visualize how many 38 games when you look at the equivalent of, you know, what's Vili LaRue or Vimulin's caps, you know, it's it's a huge amount compar comparatively and therefore yeah, how much opportunity have the girls been given in order to be able to learn their trade and, and to, to grow into the potential that we all know that they can. And then the sevens game, they're ranked 12th at the moment and um, they played 23 tournaments. They qualified onto the World Series in 2015 um, and now we are off the World Series and we've started the sevens program back this year, which I want to talk about as well. And if we're complete, just the representative picture as well, the under 20s, it's something that we're trying to establish more and more as years go on. Laurie and Johannes Hopes, she is our um, head coach of that under 20s representative team. We want to get the under 20s representative, representative team started again this year, but that's something that we want to want to focus on. So that's all right. That's okay. Um, yeah. So look, that was just to try and give a little bit of a context of what's what's happened so far. Um, and I just want to talk you through now, if if that's okay, of of what the the calendar looks like for this year. I'll start with the Springbok 15. So hopefully you all tuned in to last year. We we went to Europe, we played in the November series and the, and the objectives of that and Stanley Robenheimer is our head coach and the objectives of that tour with his management behind them is to try and get representative experience, play against the France who we're going to be playing against in the pool in, um, in New Zealand in October. We trained against England twice, which hadn't been done before, and that was we learned an awful lot from that. We played two more games against the England under 20s as well to try and give everybody game time and blood emerging talent. And we got a lot from that from a confidence building point of view in attack. Um, and we played against the Barbarians as well in Twickenham in front of 35,000 people, which allowed us just an opportunity to play against different surfaces, big stadiums, experience, exposure to what it's like to feel the pressure of, of crowds. And they were all the things that we know that are going to be important to perform in the World Cup. Then we look into this year, 2022, and at the moment we're, we're going through a big planning stage as to what have we learned from last year and what does that mean of how effective we can be in, in how we play on the pitch and off the pitch into 2022. At the moment, um, the, the forwards are in camp with, with, with Dan and Dion, the, the Springbok set piece uh, coaches. We've, we've, we've brought Bran van Straten on board from a kicking point of view to work on our tactical kick in our place kicking um, which we think is going to be really effective. And the girls face into, they're in camps at the moment and they face into hopefully six warm up games between June and um, the World Cup in, no, in New Zealand in October. And we hope that all of those games will be broadcast because we, we have tried to make an effort to broadcast more games to increase the visibility to 
allow girls that are 10, 11, 12, sitting at home watching girls and see Baba Walacha and say, I can be that or see Cindy Boy and say, you know, I, you know, I definitely relate to her and, and I definitely want to be in her shoes in five, 10 years time. And we really do think that's possible. So we hope that that's going to be an exciting year and we have got a tough pool. We, we play France, we play England and when we play Fiji, but we intend most certainly to perform with distinction and ensure that we get as far as we possibly can in that tournament because we really believe that we that we can. From a sevens point of view, we've restarted the sevens program this year. Paul Delport is our head coach and we're basing we're basing ourselves in SAS and hopefully we'll move around the country with our camps. We've got a big competition coming up at the end of April. We play in the African Cup. We have to win that competition to qualify for the Commonwealth Games, which is in July, um, and we're preparing everything that we can and using all the IP that we have, haven't had a centralised programme before and all the IP from a Blitzbocker and, and Springbox to be able to do that. We hope to be invited to one of the core series events and um, the HSB core series events as well, hopefully playing the Com Games. And then obviously we've got a home World Cup which we want to be able to maximise the potential of that from a visibility point of view. And a lot of the girls are really excited by that. We are sharing some girls across the sevens and fifteens um, and we see it as, a, as an opportunity and we're working really, really hard to do that collaboratively to ensure uh, that we grow the game at a representative level as, as much as we possibly can. Look, and, and no doubt there'll be lots of questions on that and, and we can go through that, but I think it'd be important of me to speak about the development of the game, I, although there's performance in my title, we sat down very early on and said if we're going to perform at the top sustainably, we really have to build the building blocks of, of what a development system needs to look like. And we're engaging with the schools, we're engaging with Varsity Cup, we're, we're talking to people in the province of the provincial unions have been incredible. We, we're coming to the party with this conversation about how do we at a domestic level, at an adult level, build a competition that the equivalent of the Curry Cup and hopefully get a title sponsor on board to be able to create more performance environments across the, the provincial unions to drive the standards there. And hopefully you guys can watch it. And um, we definitely are broadcasting the games this year as well and streaming all of the games for all of those purposes too. We're hoping to do to, to continue that further down at a, at a development level. Um, but this huge big asterisk around what, how do we design something that's female specific and uh, to ensure that it works and we, we try and minimise the blockers that, that get in the way of girls playing, playing rugby and playing sports in, in high schools and schools to try and encourage as many girls to see rugby as a sport that allows them to reimagine what's possible and that's definitely what we're trying to, to commit to. So hopefully there'll be lots of opportunities. One of the, the, the key things that we know is 90% of the research in the world is about men, is about guys' sports. So we're assuming lots when we when we talk about sport for the girls, but we know lots of stuff is different and they're the things that we're trying to encompass and, and include into the stuff that we build. Um, and just one more key piece is, is our coach development. I, like, I think we feel very proud that we, we put coach development at the forefront of, of our priorities and, and Betway have supported our coach development um, in, in the game and hopefully in the next two, three years, you're going to see a lot more visibility around female coaches emerging through the ranks and, and, and you know, experienced coaches that are kind of performing in the women's game. We're very excited about that because we know coaches are a huge part of the, of the puzzle to try and accelerate the standards of the game and, and create a culture in the women's game that girls can feel safe and welcome and included, which um, we know that, that we definitely can. So hopefully that summarises everything and open to any questions. Yeah, I think, I think uh, uh, JJ, if you can take over here and, and just organise this, I think uh, Lynn covered most of that. Um, she says um, sometimes people struggle to, to catch the Irish accent, but uh, I think we're used to that. I just want to make sure everybody heard that bedway part uh, with the coaching side of things. Uh, obviously, we have two programs running. The one is uh, they know elite coaches, uh, um, fast tracking of elite coaches, uh, which is a great program where we want to try and, and, and get a lot of women coaches and all men who coaches women involved and make sure they get through and then obviously the Betway program which is, is wonderful for them to support us with that. Uh, other than that I think JJ if you can manage the, the questions and answers please. Sure thing, thank you Rasi, thank you Lynn. Um, ladies and gentlemen we do have some time so we'll try to get to everybody uh, with regards to questions. Um, and again, uh, we're all adults in the room here. Let's stick to the topics um, that we want to discuss and we want you to, to um, 
put out there to to the wider public. So um, you can indicate by raising your hand if you have a question, and then we can go according to that. Okay, Craig Ray, we can start with you. Um, let's keep it to two questions each, please, um, just to make sure everybody gets through their questions. And then uh, if you add your turn and there's time left, we can come back to you. Thank you. Um, Craig, can you go first, please? Thanks, JJ. Hi, Lynn. Hi, Rossi. Um, uh, nice to chat to you again, Lynn. Um, two questions, I suppose. One, Lynn, is there a plan for, besides the Curry Cup down the line, is there some sort of cross border competition for women similar to super rugby or a urc uh down the line for women and then rassi as the women's program is now the official number two uh ranked team in the organogram does the budget for the women's team reflect that status as well those are my two questions thanks yeah Craig, i'm gonna i'm gonna jump to the first one you heard the first question i'm, I'm gonna jump to the second one first because i tried to cover that in in you know when i started craig no it, it, it's a great question and that's what i'm saying i think it won't be immediate the, the immediate impact is that listen here everybody's focused on the women's game that's immediate the budget i think while we're in this COVID crunch you know uh, um i think lynn must just tell tell you what what competitions or we, we we might be part of this year and hope we can qualify now i think that anyway but um no it, it won't immediately reflect that it, it will be a transition and and the, the sole reason for that is is because of COVID. you know to find sponsors to a lot of our programs are currently running on zero budget to be honest with you you know our elite players development pathway programs where we identified players you know that craven weeks and youth weeks has been cancelled uh, because of COVID, uh, not just because of crowds and COVID, but also because of, of, of income. You know, you know the Britain Irish Lions tour, you know, we took a big knock and not having crowds there. So, um, unfortunately, uh, you know, the mind shift has changed and we're not going to um, alter from that. But it will be, uh, I think, uh, a tra transition that will take a little bit slower. It wouldn't reflect immediately, but we, we're going to get there. Thanks. Yeah, thanks, Greg. Um, look, when it comes to competitions, I'd bite your hand off if anybody offered any kind of competitions in, uh, you know, in any age group. But I think um, at an international level, there's All right, a so we are going to step away from that particular event. Our reporter, uh, senior reporter, Dumalo Mslaude, will uh, bring yeah, us the right, latest me, on way. what has taken place at uh, the Hoshi Mamburu Museum. Okay. Let's take you now to another live event. And uh, this Guys, is can everyone uh, the... Can everyone the microphones, please? There we go. Okay. Yeah, great. And <laughs> um, so look, at an international level, um, so, so World Rugby are starting a global competition in 2023. So that will mean South Africa, the, the Springboks will play reliably four games in a global competition. So it'll be, an ex it'll be like a World Cup every year. Um, but the function of it is how do we accelerate at the amount of uh, representative rugby that every country is playing on a yearly basis. So, that, so that's definitely happening and that'll be no, the November window. But I think your point was more around like a URC equivalent. Um, yeah, sure, there, is yeah. there, is definitely, there is definitely talks of that uh, and, and we were definitely interested in, in exploring that. One thing I think we have to be careful of and it, it's coming up a lot in, in World Rugby conversations is the, the men's calendar is, is chocker block without any space. And if you were to rewrite that and redesign that, what would that look like? So I think in the women's game, we want to create opportunities and capitalize on opportunities that are offered, but we have to be careful that it, that, that it suits the, the women's game um, and that it is, it is relevant to the developmental age. And I suppose if, if I think about, and as I said, if you, if you offered this tomorrow, I'd still bite your hand off, but at the same time, we thought about the funding that goes into that, and if we looked at how much development work needs to be done in the in the women's game to make it sustainable, because we assume that you know the development structures are there for the women's game, and, and you know commonly they're not. But if we if we could look at that strategically and ensure that we're investing finances into the into the development of the game and and the elite game underneath the representative game, then I think that we know that this this game would go further for longer. And um, so they're probably the considerations, Craig, if that's helpful. Thank you. Thank you, Craig. OK, next up we have Sanili and then uh, Justin, you'll be after that. 
Thank you so much. Am I audible? Yes, you can yes. go. OK, uh, Lynn, Rassi, a very good morning to the both of you. Um, having heard your, your presentation, uh, it's, it's quite positive and this is actually that's this is something that's uh, been quite needed in SA rugby, particularly for women, I would say. Uh, I heard you mentioning, Lynn, uh, around television uh, getting uh, the games broadcasted. So that was actually one of my questions. Um, the first one is, uh, are there any plans in the works to have more of the more live Premier Division games on television, more especially uh, to for free to air television uh, for this coming season or even in the in the, the season after that? And my second question is uh, centered around grassroots development. I'm not sure. So some months ago, I spoke to a former Springbok women's player, and uh, she said that more needs to be done at a grassroots level to get the girls playing rugby from a much earlier age, uh, instead of them like picking it up in their late teens or even in some worst case scenarios in their early 20s. So is this something that SA Rugby has also identified and is possibly working on? Thank you. Um, lovely, thank you. Um, so just your first question around around broadcast. So. We're, we're working on a, an updated women's rugby strategy at the moment and, and one of its pillars is, is visibility and, and commercial partners and the reason for that is is how do we make the game more visible so that young girls can see it and, and, and think it's possible and also hopefully try to attract some some sponsors to the game and a huge part of that obviously is, is broadcasting like you said so we made a step last year where all the at the premier competition, the IPL, where one game a weekend was was broadcast on Super Sport and and it was streamed, and um, and also through the November series, they all those games were broadcast. But in particular, SABC covered two of the games, which we were really pleased with as well because it allowed that access of free to air. So I think what we're trying to do is is find the right approach, find the right combination of how do we ensure that like now we get it broadcast, but how do we ensure we we maximise the reach. We also know kind of from a women's sport point of view, streaming is 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 a part of it, because if you think about fixtures like, you know, I'm just a rugby supporter, so I like watching just games, but there's only so many hours in the day when you're watching, trying to watch men's rugby, women's rugby, under 20s, varsity cup, there's only so many hours. So what are the different platforms that that the games can be seen? And, and streaming is definitely something that I think will take off in the women's game more so than for the men's for, for obvious reasons. So that's something uh, that, that is, is a big focus and, and we're all working at it commercially as well. With regard to the, the grassroots question, look, this is this is absolutely huge and, and there's loads of myth busters in this. You know, what, why do girls not play rugby? Why do girls not play loads of different sports in school? And often it's related to, you know, what the schools think is important for girls to play and what do parents and us as parents, what do we kind of nudge our daughters towards and, and nudge our, our sons towards? Um, so like I definitely believe that, that girls can play rugby, touch rugby, tag rugby, all of those kind of introductions to rugby in, in primary school. I don't see any blockers to that at all. Definitely the, the science doesn't see any blockers to it at all. Physically, it's completely fine. Obviously, after kind of 12 years of age, physically things change. And yes, the, the, the codes have to separate. But I think that's where at the moment we, we we're having conversations with the high schools to try and gauge the appetite within the high schools from headmasters, from teachers, from coaches there, from the girls. I think what we're hearing a lot of is it's not just about trying to kind of convince uh, school, high schools to, to play rugby. What we're also hearing is girls are going to their teachers to say, hey, well, why isn't there rugby for me? Um, so that's a big project which you might want to jump in on. Yeah, yeah maybe so, so nearly what you asked there. Um, I think that's a relevant question. Um, yeah, and I almost want to, want to say one of the reasons why I stepped away from the from a from a Springbok coaching job is, you know, was I think we are transforming, uh, and and I think people always take transforming as white and black and vice versa. And you know, we, we wanted to make sure, firstly, of the Springbok men that we we don't make the same mistake which we did in 1995 and, and 2007. That it isn't just a little bit of happiness for a while, but it's actually hope that people can see. This is something happening, and and obviously, uh, I'm I'm really proud, and I always say that that we had four women on the Springbok management team when we won the World Cup in, in 2019. So that's actually the reason why we stopped women women Springbok rugby for about three or four years was actually that 
the grassroots level, there was no rugby there, you know. I mean, my, my, my youngest is, is 11 and, and she wants to play rugby and, and, and she can't play. The, and there's no access for her to play currently. So that's why we, when we stopped it, um, with the help of Maslubi, who was the previous, uh, uh, you know, manager of women's rugby, we opened eight, uh, I think it was four in the beginning, youth training centres, just to get the girls to to get to socialize and, and go to the closest place. And I think we've got eight, yeah, we've got eight youth training centers now, which is just for, for the girls to, to get used to the game and, and get the fundamentals. We've got this lovely pipeline of boys, which is a culture in South Africa. Boys play rugby, you know, rugby in the winter and cricket in the summer, and, and they, they get used to competition at the highest level. We don't have that with, with, with girls and with, with women. So you, you're spot on, and, and that's why we are, Focusing on that, and and again, it's a it's a combination of working with the departments, different departments, education, some sport, and then obviously the, you know there's, there's there's committees and stuff. But yes, um, it, it's not a challenge. It's one of the things we're busy sorting out, which which is something we'll we'll have to sort out if we want to be sustainable. Uh, thank you, Sanelli. You happy with that? Yes, yes, I am quite happy. Thank you very much. Fantastic. Thank you very much for the questions. Uh, Justin Ford, um, you can continue, please. Thank you very much, JJ. Good morning, Lynn. Good morning, Rossi. Thank you for the opportunity to just chat about something that's obviously very high of mind. Uh, Rossi, I think, JJ, if we can allow just some Afrikaans at the end. So my two questions will be towards Lynn. Um, and hopefully that Afrikaans will improve later on in your time with us, Lynn. <laughs> the conditioning of the ladies um, for me has been, and Coach Stan, yes, he's on the call as well, I've been able to be exposed to the ladies while they have been in training in Cape Town and so forth. And there's been a discernible change and improvement in that. How high on your priority list is that conditioning? And just being able to know that the ladies can endure, you know, that full 80 minutes. And then the second question is, since Babawa, we've seen quite a few of our players making it onto, you know, the team sheets of European teams. And that surely is a massive positive already for South African women's rugby. That engagement, are we, we looking at getting so much more so that they too can get exposed to, to, to that form of rugby on a European level? Yeah, thank you, Justin. Um, look, the conditioning is a, is a huge piece and um, like Coach Dan and Nasir Parker is our national SNC coach and they're both absolutely wonderful and so committed. This is such a huge topic that literally is a, is a daily conversation for us. Um, and there's a couple of reasons. Look, we, we know the obvious one is that we need the girls to 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 commit to their their training programs and work hard for the year and get as good as they can be over the next nine months. But we also have to reference the training age of, of women that come into rugby uh, that start sport in general and recognizing that usually they're coming to the sport later. And as a result, there are five, six, seven years of, of conditioning that say boys would have when they join the sport at 15, for example, girls often don't. So we're, we're trying to always push ahead, but then backtrack and, and cover our tracks as well. And, and that's a a multidisciplinary approach. So, you know, Stan and Nas and the coaches are working really hard with the medical team and the work Clint Redhead does centrally here as well. And our, our team, Doc, and our, our physios as well are constantly trying to ensure how do we medically ensure we're, we're, we're covering our foundation to try and stop the girls getting injured, but then how do we get them back quickly when they do get injured? So we're working again with the provincial unions on this this kind of elite performance environment and a piece of that is is their medical um support for their 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 provincial teams and um, we're working really hard centrally on what is our medical support and our conditioning support for our our, our national teams um, and encouraging the provincial unions on pre-seasons on obviously snc support throughout the season um, and that being individual as well you know what a, what a training program looks like for a Cindy boy who's who's in the game for 12 13 14 years it looks very different to uh, you know a, a, a yaki that's coming in and she's got two three years behind her but her potential is huge so I suppose the science behind it is 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 there just and we're trying our best to be able to to do that so it's a key focus and it takes a lot of our attention like you said 
Um, with regard to the European opportunities, so Zintle and Pupa, she started this year with uh, Exeter Chiefs and, and Cartha Jacobs, she started and, and got signed with, with Saracens and she just got her first game there at the weekend. So I think we see that as an opportunity for the girls to accelerate their learning in a World Cup year. We see it as an opportunity to create visibility and like we know that there are massive role models and it, it feeds into that aspirational pathway that we're trying to paint that picture for young girls. And we also know the IP and the, the information and the learnings that they they gather there and, and bring back hopefully to, to help build capacity in the stuff that we're doing here. Like I think one of the concerns has been mentioned, we have to, you know, is it the right approach uh, to be able to have girls work and or um, playing abroad and, and are they better placed investing in, in the elite structures here? And, and that's something I think we have to just manage. I think at the moment the seasons add up, so Say Zintley, for example, played with, with Western Province in her season here and then went over to Exeter and then it's up to Nas, Nasir centrally to be able to manage her load and, and we're talking with their medical teams. So sorry, I'll stop talking, but hopefully that just summarises it. But it's a big topic and uh, hopefully it's great that you've noticed um, and hopefully it'll be positive to, to what we're trying to do. But maybe, sorry, Jag, Lynn, can I add to this? This is probably going to sound shocking, but the reason why we stopped a couple of years ago uh, the, the women's Springbok 15s playing, you know, we, we found that because, as I said, the pipeline just wasn't there, that we actually, there was sometimes, in some instances, a girl has played seven or eight rugby games in her life, in her whole life, you know, and, and she would have then played for the Springboks. Her ninth game would have been for the Springboks. So there was no pathway where it was a slow building, fundamentals kicking into the thing. So, you know, having girls now currently playing overseas on that side in competitions, you might think, hell, oh, but that's um, almost taking the, the, the opportunity away from our local sponsors and competition and the aura around the whole thing. But uh, we were so far off that that's actually one of our options of getting girls experience. So obviously the things have changed and we we now get programs where girls can play a lot and, and Lynn is helping with that. But yeah, um, I, I think we are thankful for those girls playing on that side, certainly in, in the World Cup here. Thank you, Justin. Uh, just want to check Fritz, your, your hands up. Do you have an English question or do you want to um, ask your questions in Afrikaans? Fritz Gloster, I see you still on mute. Just, I was just on no mute. <laughs> uh, am I audible? Yes. Yes, sure. Uh, good morning, uh, colleagues. Uh, Lynn Rossi. Um, uh, most of my questions had been attended to. Um, uh, you have touched on the multidiscipline approach, uh, Lynn. Uh, now, from a social part, uh, there are you know the exposure to the sport, the promotion of the sport for young girls, uh, especially if I say social, uh, the disciplines uh, touch rugby and 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 beach rugby. Do you see that as a kind of a a, a promoter of the sport uh, for sevens and fifteens? And then uh, Rassi, um, for, just for the Afrikaans media consumer, please, if you don't mind, um, you hear a lot, a lot of times uh, we are learning by playing against the top teams okay and that is part of development now i know you as a particular good analyzer and uh how will you be involved in this whole plan this whole program of getting the standard up there thank you yeah oh then go in the first one yeah cool and just your question around using touch and, and other versions of sport absolutely look i i think one of the reasons like rassi said it, it's been a really tough two years, everybody across the world from a sporting point of view, but uh, but we've restarted a sevens program in that time. And the reason for that is, is that Saru wanted every opportunity for the for girls representative teams to be able to play and sevens um, touch. All of those things are, are definitely reasons, ways that we can, we can try and, and get girls playing more rugby. So I think we need to, there's a couple of different profiles of, of girls that join the sport. Like, for example, if you're a 14 year old girl that played a netball athletics, whatever, and you just want to kind of give it a try, for example, I think touch is often a nice way of, of introducing girls to it. Um, and then it's it's trying to, to see whether you've got an appetite or not, if you want to kind of the, the physical part of the game. And um, so they're all things that we want to definitely explore. And, and I think they, they are 
um, and it's something that will just take a little bit more time to be able to kind of engage with with different associations and the different primary schools. But I do think if once we conduct this survey with all of the, the schools to gauge their appetite, I think we'll know an awful lot more as to what are the what are the blockers, what are the opportunities within the schools? Uh, yeah, for us, um, listen, um, maybe maybe there's going to be maybe uh, sound like um, a too direct answer, but you know, um, I sometimes hear people from other countries comment on our structures and how we do things, and, and I'm not just talking about the women's game, I'm not, I'm not allowed to go to the other side, you're just talking women's game, yeah, but I mean, uh, um, I sometimes think people forget that in South Africa, we're just a unique country, you know, and, and what is needed to be done to be successful, that we will do, you know, so if I have to carry water, for the women's 15s that in New Zealand, and that would help. I will do that. So, uh, um, and, and I say that, you know, in jest, because we 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 are different. I'm director of rugby here. I came back actually from Munster as director of rugby, you know, and I would have worked, and I did work with Neil Pell. I know Neil is moving on, and I, I worked with, with, you know, you can ask Stanley now. Stanley will say, Rashi was not at a training session yet, but I promise you, Don Iman has been there, and Dion David has been there, and Jock will work with them, you know. So, um, you know, as far I can help. I mean, to get Lynn on board was part of my job to be involved uh, with the women's program to get them on top there. So um, I sometimes think people look at their structures and their countries and, and how things work there. And, they, and, and when we do things a little bit different in South Africa, it baffles them a little bit and, and they like to comment and say, but that's not what a director of rugby should do. But, you know, how do they know? How do they know what works for our country and what doesn't? And already the, the discussions which Lynn and myself and Charles Vessel, our general manager, had is, you know, we might change the whole structure, not the whole structure, the whole, the, 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 the personnel or the resources which we might need, which South Africa need for us to be successful, which might not work in England or might not work in New Zealand, but will work for South Africa. So uh, in, in, in short, uh, 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 what we need here is, is what, what I'm going to try and support her uh, and, and, and the girls okay. and the coaches and, and, and everybody. So um, whatever's needed, yeah, I'll try and help as far as I can. If it's on the field help coaching, it's that. If it's in the office helping to get a sponsor, it's that. You know, if it's on this media conference, you know, getting you guys to understand how important it is for us, then it will be that. And and the same it will be with our men's team. Uh, thank you, Fritz. I will do uh, give Rasi the opportunity to do um, something in Afrikaans at the end of it. I just want to make sure make that sure. Um, everybody is happy with. Um, yeah. the, because we are running out of time. Marnus Cook, you have some questions? And then I think we can start um, closing closing this um, interviews. Um, Marnus, you can go. Hello, Rasi. Hello, Len. I was actually wondering uh, if you're looking actually um, realistic, what's actually the aim for the women on the field at the um, um, Sevens World Cup? I mean, are you actually hoping to actually win I don't know, one match or, or what? Thank you. The, the sevens or the fifteens or both? I'm sevens, please, Rasi. Sevens, yeah. Um, do you know what, Marlis? We're, we're, we're so... We're, we're so far away from it, we haven't actually looked at and you know, pools and so on haven't been haven't been drawn. Um, and our objective, we're just so focused on qualifying for the Com Games at the end of April and, and getting the program started and how do we establish a program, what are our principles that we're not looking so, so far ahead. Um, but by all accounts, I suppose from a seventh point of view, what we do know is that they were full time programs. There's lots of the girls that are still there that have come from that have been playing 15s um, and we're trying to maximise what learnings we do have to literally hit the ground running, but also, you know, what new talent have we got? coming in that will kind of inform the style of play that we have because we know we're against the clock and we know we have to try and kind of perform as quickly as possible and to the point before how do we manage the load of all of those girls to make sure that they you know they don't get injured they stay on the pitches um but 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 play a lot of games to try and learn as much as possible so hopefully that just gives you a flavor of what we're going through so it's kind of hard to define that one um and definitely from a 15s point of view like I, we we're 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 in a tough pool. There's no doubt about. It. We most certainly are there to perform with distinction. We are planning a really intense year, 
that's very, very targeted and, and pointed. And we really hope that we're going to improve in the things that we've said that we want to improve on. And we know that when we do, we're, we're going to be a different outfit that I know already other teams are starting to look at to say, shit, man, like, what are you guys, what's the, what's the potential going to be? And you're going to be a huge threat. Um, so, yeah, look, we'll definitely update you once the sevens, once we know more. It, like, if I can, JJ, do you mind just take the opportunity? I think one thing we've been talking about lots in this conference has been around the structures and the infrastructure, and it's very kind of business level. I think what we've not talked about is a lot is, is women, is girls. Um, we've talked saying that what we were trying to do is different to, to the guys, but and we know that there's something emerging there and research is starting to support that. But I think what we're trying to do is how do we capture what it's like for girls to play rugby, to want to play rugby in South Africa, to, to be a girl in South Africa and, and want to play sport. And like, what are the things that 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 you're looking at? One of the things that we know and I feel very connected to is, is what is the value of sport on, on just people and their confidence and, and their own growth and so on. And we know that in general, women's sport, and this is not a bad thing, this is just based on it's young, you know, hasn't been massively, massively included. And what does that feel like from a value point of view? So I think what we're trying to do is create structures that we know girls are thought of. They're at the start, they're at the center of our decision making process. And we've definitely got that commitment from a leadership point of view. What does that look like practically? That looks like, you know, your change rooms are open. You know, your kit is your size. You've got you walk into a room and there's, there's girls that are on the wall, for example, or you, you, you click into a website and, and you see girls that are there like that just shows you that I'm welcome. I'm warm. I'm I'm I'm, I'm thought of. And the, the confidence piece, I think in particular, from if we look to our representative, our national players, I think what we're trying to encourage the girls and, and the girls would be sick of us probably saying this is that we definitely want to treat them as 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 adults, as grown ups. And what we expect, therefore, is for them to really consider their voice, you know, and to be able to to, to speak up and say, you know, hey, I, you know, I think this or I want to play here or this training is is difficult can we do it this way or something like that and we know the value that that's going to bring to them from a confidence point of view off the pitch as as girls as women in their own communities as well as what we know we need them to to show up as decision makers on the pitch so hopefully that just gives you a little flavor of what we're trying to do and um, and this is this is talking about rugby but we're talking about kind of female leadership off the pitch as well i see amy's on the call and um, we're talking about role models in, in referee and administration in, in boardrooms in leadership and um, really trying to I expand the reach of, of the women's game to make it or th the game in general to make it exclusive as possible. Uh, it says, I, saw, I just saw uh, um, a text coming through there on, on the team thing. Uh, are we going to get, we're talking about mass, uh, mass participation and in a country that's conservative, how are we going to get girls to play rugby? Uh, and as, as I mentioned, my, 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 my 11 year old, would love to play. Uh, my twins actually, when we were in Ireland, uh, played played rugby for, for a club there. So I think it's a bit of a myth that 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 girls don't want to play rugby. I think the moment you get them to socialise in it and to understand it and enjoy it, and obviously the mo the moment uh, um, I can't remember who asked the question there. Hopefully you know I'm answering you. I couldn't see who asked that, but the moment you get the girls playing on television and, you know, they're going to World Cups and, you know, they get medals one day. Um, I always think, I'm not saying we're that far behind, but I think about Japan in 1995 when I was coaching in, in, in Bloemfontein uh, at the Cheetah, so I was playing there. Uh, uh, you know, Japan got 115 no against New Zealand and then 15 years later we got them in a quarter final and and it was a bloody tough game that they, they beat Scotland they beat Ireland I, I think you know so I'm not saying we're that far behind I'm just saying things can quickly change because 15 years is not not that long people think it's long it's not that long so the perception that it's a man's game and, and South Africa is a conservative country um, I think whenever we've experienced giving the girls the opportunity to uh, firstly just socialize and, and enjoy it uh, and then see the role models on television. I think it will just boom from there. And I don't think that will be a problem for us. Um, thank you, everybody. I just need to check. Is there any more questions to Lynn before we um, just switch to Afrikaans briefly for Justin um, and Rassi? Lynn can swear two or three minutes in Afrikaans. I'm, I'm not sure if I missed um the potential program that is set out is that something that you're still working on to ensure that the 
both the sevens and fifteens women get to play some active matches ahead of their specific World Cups this year? Yeah. So Justin, that's just a question. Do they have warm up games? Is it? Yeah. So the, we're working on a calendar. Um, COVID planning is difficult in general for sport, definitely international sport, obviously, but we're working on a calendar and we hope to have six international games um, in the build up to the World Cup. And before that, the girls will be in their premier competition and all the provincial unions are working really hard to try and really try and drive the standards. So from April 23rd of this year, the girls will be playing games all the way up to October. From a sevens point of view, we played the Hermana sevens last weekend. We're, we're playing um, just trial games with, with boys next camp that we're having. Then we go straight into the Africa Cup. There's just not a lot of international movement from a sevens point of view. Um, hopefully we get uh, an invite into Europe, hopefully May time, and then Com Games July time with some international, any opportunities we have in that. And then that will springboard onto September when we play the World Cup. So we're, we're trying our best within the, the means that we have, but it, usually international stuff is mainly limited by travel as opposed to finance. Okay, um, okay, Justin, um, can you just repeat your questions in Afrikaans, um, just to Rasi quickly, and then we can finish up. Thank you very much, Len. Rasi, yeah, alsjeblieft, you are not in the court. How important the women's die vrouwen, um, wets, die of the dames um, in SR Rugby now going to be, as you said, is yeah. for see us, that's super good. And here, the, the planning that now is going Tijdens net voor die CBS en die 15 wereldbeker en ook net jou um, betrokkenheid met die span en met land en so voort. Ja, dat krijg ik. Dank je Justin. Ja, zo zeg ik. Er al het zo. Ga ga niet alles proberen. Al echt zo. Ik heb net een high level antwoord gegeven. Sorry. Die groot um, ding wat ik denk ons vandaag wil overbrengen is hier. Uh, dat is al een keer gepraat hier en daar. Wat, dan, dat was nog een ambtelijke persconferentie waar ons lekker voor Lynn voorgesteld het en allemaal het aan ontmoet en, uh, um, en, en so aan. So die groot rede, hoekom ons vir, 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 vir Lynn aangesteld het is, van het ek bij SR Rugby is 2011, het, het, het vrouwen rugby maar altijd so'n bykie um, derde of vierde en allemaal sy gedagte is gekom en, en, en ek moet sê die laatste vier jaar um, is het elke keer as ons ons um, strategische beplanning doen die einde van die jaar begin vrouwe raak by al meer uh, topic geraak het en jy het so twee jaar terug het ons net besluit maar as het die nou uh, geprioritise word binnen SA rugby as, as op die level waar het moet wees nie en nou het ons lang gepraat het en, en dit um, nie gedebatteer het en mooi dier alles gewerk het en gesien het, maar waar sien wereld uh, rak en, en het, uh, die ouwe hier by wereld rak, waar sien hulle die, die, vrouwe, die vrouwe game en het ons net besef, maar jy weet, uh, behalwe vrouw is het verdien, uh, um, gaan het vir ons een greiding wees as ons vrouwe rak by op die selle level kan kreis aan die lande, so die heiliglik is het tweede Ge, ja, my Afrikaanse woorde rap nog op, uh, word het tweede, is, het, is het tweede gerank in, in, in SA Rugby, en door dit te sê, is hulle eindelijk boer die blitsboeken en die juniorboeken en SA School en al die spanne gerank, net onder die springboeken. Um, en ek weet, die vraag wat altyd daaruit kom is, weet, nou, maar wat beteken dit? Dit beteken maar net dat ons gaan nou anhou beplan en beplan totdat ons vrouwens competitive raak aan die 7 scout en in die 15, 15, 15 vrouwens scout, dat hulle weet ten lande soos Nieuw-Zeeland en Frankrijk en daar ons eventueel gaan competeer. Ek moet in die selle asem sê, uh, ons verwacht jou middelik uh, wonderwerke nie. Um, ek het Japan vergelijk wat uh, 15 jaar terug tegen ons uh, tegen ons hele verloor het in, in die World Cup met een massieve telling en 15 jaar later is hulle een helse competitive. Ek denk ons vrouwen is so ver achter die, maar uh, met Lynn wat aangestel is as die nieuwe um, weet, uh, hoog prestatie bestuurder um, is is ons, is ons volle daarop gefokus. Weet, ons CWS program is weer aan die gang, Paul Delport is, 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 die, is die coach daar, Stanley is ons hoofdcoach by die, by, by die Springbok vrouwe. Uh, dit is World Cup hierdie jaar, ons speel in Nieuw-Zeeland, um, ons vrouwe in CWS, hoopendlik kan ons krijg dat hulle qualify. So, um, ja, overal, word die vraag gevraag, gaan die budget dadelijk praat met uh, die vrouwe ons tweede ger, um, ger, gerank is, uh, um, gaan die budget daad, dadelijk daarmee praat, ongelukkig is die antwoord nee, en, en die groot rede daarvoor is maar, 
die COVID situasie, ons noem het maar die COVID crunch, uh, jy weet, as ons inkomst is gehad het en so het definitief, definitief dadelijk oorgeskyf is, maar ons kan nie die ander program nou net vir die water onder die, onder die eend uitruk en die program net laat sink nie. So, um, ons is bezig om met goeie borgen te praat, uh, 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 die weet, Petwe is tla aan boord van die een uh, coaching program uh, wat ons baie ondersteun mee, wat ons mooi probeer uitwerk en een sukses afhan maak, Ons is bezig met het coaching program, uh, uh, weet die fast tracking of, of, of elite black coaches, waar die potentiaal is, die vrouwens program is daarby ingesluit. Um, so, ons praat met baie goeie solid sponsors, uh, wat moendelik aan boord gaan kom, om, om die 15 game, 15 vrouwens game vir ons te, te ondersteun op alle levels. So, ek hoop ek het die meeste van die dinge aan geraak, En dan, uh, obviously, het Lynn een klomp opwarmingswedtrijde uh, gereel vir die, vir die, vir die vrouwe is uh, uh, 15, 15 kore. Uh, vir die 7 is dit bykie meer moeilik. Um, mens is maar baie af, afhangend van hoe World Rugby jou gaan support en waar daar span en daar toe kan toer heen en weer. Uh, op hierdie stadium, ja, ons maar net uh, vir die Com Games try qualify. Um, maar die local program in termen van ons interprovinciale, ek gaan amper sê ons vrou Curry Cup, jy weet, ons hoop ons kreeg titelsponsor daar, die games hoop ons gaan gestream of, ge, of uitgesaai word op, op, op supersport en die girls gaan nou van binnen een maand of so gaan hulle gereeld daar begin speel. Ek weet, daar is een mond vol, maar ek het alles vir jou probeer kammer. Uh, thank you very much everybody. I see Sanele, do you have a question or is your hand still up? Ok. Yes, yes. I just have a quick question. Also, seeing the time, so I'll make mine very quick. Um, I Thank just you. wanted to 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 ask. Um, Russ, you've already pointed it out that yes, yeah, South Africa is indeed a unique country, uh, with its own challenges on many many levels. So I just wanted to check. Um, with with everything that you guys have said, with everything that's going on and still going to happen in terms of the development of the women's game. Have the former players of the Springbok women's team also been engaged in this, or is there a plan to do so, to also get their input in this, uh, especially uh, the black players as well, when it comes to the development of the girls, especially the 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 the, the black women themselves, and the situations that they face. Yeah, Sanela, I would, I would uh, that's a great question. I would like to answer the first part. You know, the, um, how, how did we get to Lynn? So, um, uh, yeah, uh, sorry, JJ, we, we, this is worth going a little bit over the time for this one. It'll only be four minutes, uh, uh, both of us uh, uh, combined. Um, so uh, wh why did we why did we get Lynn? So when we decided, what, what are we doing wrong? What, why is the woman not performing? Because we took the women's sevens and put them just right next to Neil Powell and his sevens team. And we gave them Paul Dalport, who's an excellent coach, and we just ran a women's program, a men's program there. And the girls got every, we got, we had contracted girls and they did the same conditioning and the same coaching and everything, but they weren't successful. They, they came close, but they weren't successful. So. Then I said, listen, yeah, I'm obviously doing something wrong here because uh, if the women's sevens, we only have to get 12 girls out of the whole of the country to be competitive. Obviously, Rasi, you're doing something wrong by just running a men's program there. And then we looked all over, oh, you know, is there other sporting coach in South Africa where we can get, uh, you know, women who's experience in other sports to come and help us here? And then eventually we got Lynn in. Actually, first of all, to do a whole research project for us on wh what's going on in South African sports and rugby specific and compare that with the rest of the world. Now, that, now I think I, I will let her talk further, but she engaged on every, every level from the CEOs and maybe, maybe, maybe you must go on that. <laughs> yeah, no, look, forgetting about the, the conversations with the rest of the world to try and figure out what they were doing but um engaging with with the girls and and a couple of the core girls now that are that are in the national team and and former people as well that had been in the development of the game to just try and get their sense of their experience and and look you know like I, i'm in the women's game i'm in the game of rugby in the women's game 22 23 years myself as well you know i'm not i'm not blind to the things that that any kind of emergent sport obviously has to experience. So I suppose you're right, look, we captured it from the voices of the people that that had been through it to try and understand what we do. And the approach that we've been taking has been, 
we have this plan, but um, it has to be translated into a South African context. And at any stage, if it, if we're not, then we, we pause and, and we figure it out. But look, on that point, I, I have a list of 217 former Springbok women that I need to get in contact with. And please, even with this group, can we try and, um, and get that? And like, we have lots of information from lots of contact, but we want to capture all of those people um, and, and work to try and gather information. It's just some of them have been difficult to reach out to and some we have been managed to. But what I hope over the next probably two, three years with coach education programs and um, the visibility that we're going to do, hopefully there'll be more women in the communities that will see rugby as a sport for them again. And they'll be able to bring their information back and manage and, and coach and, and referee and be board members and be leaders and, and be supporters, be sponsors, be mothers, be, be sisters, whatever it is. Um, because we really want that that information back in. And, and we know that if you've obviously committed to the game in a time when it wasn't supported, we know you love the game and we want you to have the ability to do that again, but just hopefully in a different role. But that's a job that we're definitely working on and any help for you guys can, can give me on that, I'd be delighted. Okay, thank you everybody. I think that's very productive um, and that you will all um, listen to the the pleas and the calls from from our two guests um, to, to help support the game. Uh, just concluding here then, um, just confirming Justin, your hands up, but I'm sure it's not deliberate. Thank you. OK, thank you, everybody. Much appreciated. We do appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank Bye. you. Thank you. Okay, you can, I'm not, yeah.